Thanks for clicking on the video. My name's Tom Allsop, and if you're a beginner looking to develop a fundamentally sound serve, this will be the most important video you've ever watched. An error that players make at every level, but especially for beginners, is attempting technique that is too advanced for your current skill level. Obviously, the best players in the world have a very advanced and refined coordination chain where all of their body is working in the right sequence at the right time to hit the ball 130 miles an hour. That's ridiculously fast. So we can't do what they're doing. And you have to find a technique, a coordination chain that is appropriate for you, for your skill level, and also for your goals. Because your goal is obviously going to be different than a pro. We need to get the ball in the court, all right? That should be the goal of every beginner to get the ball in play to get into rallies, to have more fun and to develop more skills from that ball being hit back and forth. Then we'll look into control it a little, a little bit. Can you find their backhand? Can you go up the tee? Can you control your first and second serve? Once you can do that, then you can start to develop more advanced coordination, right? And obviously that's where we want to get to, but we have to go one step at a time. If you're a beginner and you go straight to continental grip, you're trying to be on edge, you're trying to pronate. I've seen it a thousand times, probably more, where people end up developing weird looking strokes, some Frankenstein service motion because you're attempting things that you can't realistically achieve. This video of Roger Federer serving left-handed, first of all, he is rubbish at serving left-handed, but he's smart enough to know that he has to adapt it to his skill level with his left hand. So he's serving like this because that's where he's at. It doesn't matter that he understands what a great serve looks like or even feels like. When it comes to his left hand, he's not coordinated to even attempt it. So he's smart enough to go with a coordination chain that allows him to be successful at achieving his goal, which is to put the ball in court so that everyone, including himself and everyone watching, can have more fun. And the best way for Roger Federer to really develop a left-handed serve He's going to evolve it. He's going to make incremental adjustments to go one step at a time. So every day he gets a little bit more coordinated and he can do a little bit more with the ball. So before I show you some exercises and demonstrate the technique that I think would be appropriate for you as a beginner, it's important to understand that basic technique doesn't mean it's bad technique. Just like if I'm throwing a ball like this, right? if I throw a ball like this, that's not bad technique. It's just basic technique. Now this, this technique allows me to do more things. I can, I can throw it faster, I can throw it further. And this technique where I'm using more of my body is a more complex, more advanced motion. It's gonna allow me to do more things. But that doesn't mean that this is wrong. And when you're developing a serve, it can be pretty simple, pretty basic. Just develop it in a way where it's fundamentally sound. And don't, there's a lot of coaches out there who think that, well, if you don't develop the right service motion with continental grip and do all this stuff that we see from advanced players, you're going to develop bad habits. That is nonsense. You do not develop bad habits from serving with a very basic motion. It's just basic, and it gives you a great foundation to build from. The first thing I want you to focus on is striking the tennis ball. Not pushing it, but actually striking the ball. So you feel like you're getting a good hit on it. Now, one way of developing this technique is to grab yourself a volleyball. This is a, this is a soccer ball that's, that's flat. But get a volleyball and feel like you can just strike that ball and get a good connection. You could probably do it with a balloon. Anything that you are just hitting, you're not pushing against it. You're not flicking at it. You're striking it. So if I do this motion here, that is a great basic service motion where, again, we take the racket, we're keeping it pretty simple on the take back, and we are striking the ball. One thing I recommend doing is getting yourself some big, soft, like sponge balls, just walk around the house, trying to hit things with it. You know, just direct that ball. I promise you, if you do this motion, you're gonna start developing the feel for a serve, and it's gonna be a technically sound motion that you develop. 
We then have to move it to the next level. How do we evolve this service motion? What's the next step? Well, let's go back to this ball. If I wanted to really hit this ball further, rather than having my elbow here as I strike it, which again, most people would, when they're starting out like Roger Federer, this elbow is quite close and it's forwards. And that allows for a very linear swing where we understand where the racket head is in relationship to the ball and it makes for a pretty easy strike. But again, what we wanna do then, once we've got familiar with that, to hit this ball harder is start from further back. So get your elbow back here. I feel like it comes forwards into the strike. That's gonna turn it into a bit more of a throw motion. So elbow back here, forwards and strike. That's gonna to begin to give it a little bit more force and you're gonna develop more of a throwing motion. You can either start it here or you can start it here and try and find this position, but we want the elbow to be back. Once we throw it up, we want the elbow to come forward. And again, we're just striking the ball. We're trying to get a clean connection on the ball. So elbow back, forwards, strike. If we wanna start here, same thing, throw it up, get your elbow back, forwards, strike. I actually coached a player who played volleyball and it was no surprise that they had a very good serve. One thing she was doing though, is as she hit, she would come this way, because I guess that was the natural swing path when they hit a volleyball serve to continue down here. It's a very linear motion. With the serve, I wanna encourage you to start moving the racket down the left of your body. So we get the racket back here, we get the elbow back, we're striking the tennis ball, if you can get more of a follow through down the left of your body where the side of the racket that you've hit the ball with is facing your left leg, you're gonna start developing a throwing motion with pronation. Because what we see when someone throws is the arm rotates. So you can see my thumb is down. That's a very natural movement if you're throwing something. something. So the arm has to rotate. So next step is to get this elbow back here and strike the ball but now we're following through so we're not just stopping at contact we're following through and developing a bit more of a throwing motion it's important to understand that so far i've only used an eastern grip which is basically the grip that i would use to bounce this ball here it puts my hand right behind the racket it feels like the strings are an extension of my hand because they're in alignment here Whereas with a continental grip, like we're chopping something, I would have to rotate my arm to square up the racket head, which eventually is what you're gonna do as you rotate, you get your throw motion, you're gonna pronate and square up the racket head. But this is difficult to do when you're starting out and there's no rush to try and get there. Use a grip that's comfortable to you. Don't go so far around where it's like a semi-western. You wanna feel like you're at least close to, to like you're hammering something but it's okay if you're a little bit off. And again, that's gonna make it a little bit easier to develop your, your throwing motion. Once you've got to this stage, we can then start to use a continental grip to allow you to pronate and to rotate the racket head free, more freely through contact and to start putting more spin on the ball. But don't rush that step. You need to get familiar with the throwing motion, nice coordinated action where you're striking the tennis ball you start to get your elbow back and rotate your arm through, then you'll be ready. The thing is the continental grip requires a lot of arm rotation. We have to supinate in, we have to pronate through. So if you're a beginner, usually you're gonna have a very linear motion. So we need to get to the stage where you are rotating the arm. And we've basically done that in the last step. We get the elbow back and we rotate the arm through to this side of the body. Once you feel comfortable doing that, then the continental grip is gonna be easier to execute. So I will usually introduce the continental grip when someone is at the stage where they've got the throwing motion down, the strike in the ball, and now they wanna hit a little bit more spin because this grip will naturally allow you to spin the tennis ball as opposed to the Eastern grip, which faces the strings to the target. So play around spinning the ball with the continental grip, but don't lose the motion because quite often someone will go from a decent throwing motion and then they'll use a continental grip and now they'll 
kind of hook the ball in play because the grip is counterintuitive. They don't understand now where the racket head is in relationship to the hand and they take shortcuts. The other reason why you want to eventually progress to a continental grip is because it allows you to move this racket head a lot quicker than the handle or the angle of the arm. So I'll give you a demonstration with a continental grip. You will see that as the racket came through there, it got into this position where it's now overtaken the angle of the arm. Whereas often with an Eastern grip, things tend to travel as one speed. Now, if you rotate the arm around your body, you might be able to move this ragged head a little bit quicker, but you're still gonna be a little bit restricted with an Eastern grip. With a Continental, it allows you to move this ragged head a lot quicker through contact. But again, that's when your goals have changed, right? When your coordination is improved, when you feel comfortable with your throwing motion and controlling the ball in the box, then move around the handle to continental, work some spin on the ball and see if you can move the tip of the racket a little bit quicker to generate more power. But don't skip steps. You don't get there any quicker by skipping steps. If you see someone who has a more developed stroke than you or than your son or whatever, it's because they've moved through the steps quicker. They've not just jumped to that end step and oh, someone told them what the right technique was and look, they've got it. It's usually because a talented player will move through the progressions to where after a week, they're ready for a continental grip. If you're not there yet, don't skip steps. You'll just develop bad habits and you'll end up with weird strokes that someone like myself has to try and fix. So it doesn't matter whether I'm working with someone who wants to win Wimbledon. I'm not gonna skip steps. I'm not gonna go straight to continental grip day one because you wanna win Wimbledon. What we're gonna do is move through the progressions. And if you are talented enough to be an advanced player to win Wimbledon, you're gonna move through those progressions so much faster than a less talented player. The best thing you guys can do for your game, and I mean this genuinely, is sign up to my video analysis. Rather than watching YouTube videos and trying these random things, I can give you tailored advice that's appropriate for you, your skill level, and your goals.